looks like a bunch of just random gaskets in here and stuff like that here's a little bottle it's kind of a neat little medicine bottle i don't know if these have any value or not Let's see what else we got in here hope oh, there's something in this oh guys check it out check it out check it out and good morning everybody silas here again today we're off on another adventure we're heading back to Minnan, nebraska this may be the last time i go there for the foreseeable future anyway they had their auction i bought one item at the auction there's a bunch of stuff i was bidding on i wasn't able to get anything that i wanted but then there was this truck there and nobody was bidding on it it was pretty cheap and so i thought well i guess i'll bid on that so i bid on it and i won it so i'm on the way now to go pick it up Today it's not just me though, I've got my son with me back there in the back seat. He decided he wanted to go with daddy and then I'm going to pick up my dad. So we're going to have three generations running up there and I figured while we're there, we'll probably run into the museum again. My dad really likes it there and uh, so be an opportunity for him to go and then my son's never been there and he probably won't remember it but we'll have fun anyway. And we made it here. Ben is checking out all the cool trucks. What we've got to do on this truck is we've got to get all the sideboards off of it because I don't want to haul it home in the wind with all those. So we're going to get those off of there. We're going to cut them off with the saw real quick, throw them in the burn pile, then we'll get it loaded up and get it out of here. It's got one flat tire, so I'm glad I brought my handy dandy little miniature air compressor. This won't get it aired up all the way, but it'll get it at least some of the way. And we are loaded up, chained down, ready to go. That's gonna make a world of difference having those sideboards off of there. They can come in and grab those, their skid steer, and throw those in the burn pile later. I think it's good to go. This truck looked pretty solid in the pictures, and they took 102 pictures of this truck. And the only spot they didn't show was the driver's side floorboard, and it's completely rotted out right there. So it was very 
convenient that that spot wasn't shown in the pictures but that's okay for the price I got it for I'll still be okay so not a real big deal on that it's got really good color be a good nose for a wall hanger the cab is still pretty solid other than that one spot so somebody can still build it my tires are squatting a little bit just on this side though so I think it's because I'm on a hill there's kind of a hump right here so once we get it out on flat ground I'll double check that but it's loaded pretty good we're gonna head to the museum check it out and then hit the road coming back they're still gonna have one more auction there's a bunch more cars there's a bunch more cool stuff I think there's an old street car some really neat stuff gonna be in the next auction so be sure to stay tuned for that it's gonna be sometime in the spring I don't know exactly when I may come back and film one more time once they're ready for that auction I don't know for sure yet we'll kind of see how it goes but if I don't make it back be sure to look for that I'll be sure to post it on my social media which that's a plug for that if you don't already follow me on Facebook and Instagram be sure you go do that because I post stuff on there that I don't always post on YouTube I'm just taking a quick break it's pretty nice right now the rain kind of let up for a second and I'm just out here walking through the cars as you guys know I walk all the time I'm constantly on my feet a lot of times I will walk 20 to 30,000 steps a day I go up and down the ladder on the loader all the time over and over and over again every day sometimes I'm hiking through the trees sometimes I'm climbing on cars long story short I'm on my feet all the time and you know what makes that absolutely miserable is uncomfortable work boots and that's why I want to talk to you about today's sponsor Brunt these boots have been a lifesaver I am not just saying this because this is a sponsored video these boots are legitimately the most comfortable to break in boots I have ever owned fresh out of the box they were a little bit stiff like all boots are but there was never a point where they were really uncomfortable and by the end of the first day they fit me fine and besides how comfortable they are one of my favorite thing about these boots is the price I know the saying you get what you pay for but my last pair of boots were a lot more expensive than these and I'm not gonna name names but they were the most uncomfortable boots even after wearing them for nearly two months so not only are these boots super comfortable super affordable but if you go to bruntworkwear.com slash adventures10, that's bruntworkwear.com slash adventures10, you can save $10 off of your first order. And with all of their products, they have a risk-free 30-day trial. Thanks again to Brunt Workwear for making this video today possible and for making my feet comfortable. Now let's get back to the video. Look, look what I found. You find a choo-choo? Mm-hmm. I didn't notice this one last time. Look how it steers. 19 oh something Oldsmobile. Says it up here, 1904 Oldsmobile. That's pretty crazy. That's a tiny airplane up there. Right above you. They used to haul ice in that because they didn't have refrigerators. Oh, look at this one. Yeah, that's a neat one, isn't it? That's what I don't understand about oh, them smoke. <gasps> they always say they have one. a cold beer. It's all but they empty. never deliver ice. Yeah. <laughs> I've got this one. Those are planes are so big. Yeah, big airplanes. Then look at this old train cart called a trolley car behind you. Wow, that's cool. Ben, you want to go in this one? We can go in this one. You want to hop up here? Can you get it? Need help? Here, I'll help you. People used to ride in these a long, long, long time ago. Before Daddy was born, before Papa was born, even before Papa's Daddy was born long time ago. Okay, you see that? Yeah. This is this is how they drove it. Oh. These are all the controls to drive it. All the controls to drive it? Mm-hmm. Oh. That's a big train there. your desk. Here? You can't sit down. Look at that there. You're right in here. I didn't even see this the last time I were here. Put your legs right up against the exhaust manifold. The Minneapolis. Probably homemade. That's my guess. But it's definitely neat. 
It's Minneapolis Moly. It's like they combined a truck and a combine together. Come on, Bennett, let's go. Well, we are done here. Time to hit the road back. If you want to see more about the museum, you'll have to watch my videos I posted a while back about the museum. I didn't film a whole lot in there just because you guys have already seen that, those that watch regularly. But I got to air up one tire on my trailer and we're going to hit the road. Well guys, it's about 9 o'clock at night. Actually, it's about 9.30 now. And I just now got home. I am dog tired. So we're going to check this truck out when I unload it and it's a little bit lighter outside. So I'll see you guys then. And good morning everybody. We are back again today. It has been quite the temperature shock. It was 86 degrees when we loaded that truck, I think. And right now, or at least when I left the house, it was 34 degrees. So. Uh, quite a bit of a temperature change. I had to dig out all my flannels, my undershirts. I had to dig it all out because uh, it was a little bit chilly when I went outside with the dog this morning. We're supposed to get our first hard freeze tomorrow. It's supposed to get down to about 25 degrees, but then by next weekend, it's supposed to be back up to 90. So a uh, <laughs> roller coaster ride. Anyway, I want to get that truck unloaded. I got to get all the chains off of it and everything. I got the loader running up front. I'm not going to roll it off. I'm being lazy today. I'll just go grab the loader and lift it off. Then once I get it lifted off, I'll set it to the side. We'll kind of go over it and look it over and kind of figure out roughly what it's worth and roughly what I'm going to make on the deal. Yeah, this truck, when I was cutting the sideboards off, this area right here caught on fire on me. So uh, I, luckily I had a gallon of water in the back of my truck, drinking water, so I dumped that on it, put the fire out. But uh, there was more wood on here when I left, so uh, evidently I lost some wood along the way, somewhere, some way, somehow. But I did take off most of it before we left, so it looks like I didn't lose too much, and I took the back roads anyway, so I didn't have hardly anybody behind me at any point in time, so it wasn't a real big deal there. We'll kind of look this truck over. The cab's not all beat in. The top of the cab's in pretty good condition. The seat's all here. Obviously the cover's bad, but the springs aren't all smashed and falling apart and broken. So that's a pretty good deal. Just this spot right here in the floorboard, it's completely rotted out. And this driver's floorboard coming up into this kick panel right here. And a little bit up along there. But uh, not, I mean, that's all repairable. They sell patch panels for all that stuff. It just kind of a bummer I thought I was buying a rust free truck I probably wouldn't have bought it if I would have known about that but I think we can still do okay on it the doors are rock solid still they shut perfect they're lined up perfect so that's a good thing up here it's got a little bit of a dent in here where the doors open too far at once or twice but not too bad that's very fixable that's not a real big deal there and even those if they are completely ruined they can buy those brand new for like $75 that patch panel right there that's what they used to be anyway so not a real big deal on that once again the cab corners those are pretty solid. Looks like a little bit of bubble rust, but that's an easy fix. The back of the cab along the seam a lot of times will rust out. This one here is rock solid. There's a few small dents here and there. Just little ones though. Nothing that can't be worked out fairly easily. The front clip's pretty good on this one. It does look like it has one damaged spot right here that somebody's puttied over the years. Probably ran into something and pulled it back out. That can be fixed. It's got really good matching color that matches the cab. Now normally I don't sell these front clips with the cabs. Most of the time anyway, just because these big wheel openings here unless you're running big wheels on your truck they just don't look good and then the fenders come down further as well so if you want them to go on a, a small truck chassis or something like that you have to shave the fenders off and so a lot of people don't want to do that and so they they will do that but they don't want to give you anything for the front clips so that's why a lot of times i chop them up but this one matches the truck really well it's a good patina color so i think somebody may end up wanting the front clip and the cab on this one this side of the cab is a little bit better than the other side cab corners rock solid on this one as well just little few little tiny pinholes not bad at all door opens up good closes good this side the floorboard is in much better condition there's a little few little pinholes in there but not that bad not nearly as bad as the other side the uh, kick panel where the fender bolts on has a little bit of rust but it's very repairable so 
this side is really much better than the other side of the truck. It's got all the chrome dash parts on it. A lot of these are just painted, but this near has the chrome glove box and the chrome uh, trim around where the radio would have been. It doesn't have a radio, unfortunately. And this isn't the completely optioned out truck because the optioned out ones have chrome around the windows on the outside and on the inside as well. And I believe they have it around the windshield as well on a lot of these, so, or not a lot, but some of these. It does have the deluxe heater in it. That's an option there. And that's a fairly valuable piece by itself. This trim that grows around the windshield, if I were to part this truck out and chop it up, there's a lot of very valuable parts in here. This trim right here is worth quite a bit of money, not rusted out. And this in here doesn't look like the windshield's been leaking, so I'm sure it's still good. So lots of good money there, good value there. And there's kind of a bonus right there. I'm always needing those because every now and then I'll get bottles in the scrap that don't have lids. And if you have a lid in a bottle, it doesn't matter what condition it's in, they will exchange it for a brand new one. So uh, that's where I've gotten most of my oxygen bottles for my torch setup is just finding them in the junk. And I have to piece them together. A lot of times I find the bottle one place and the lid another. So actually, I think I have like three lids now and only one bottle. So I need to find some more bottles. Let's hop up in here, see what we can find inside the truck. Look it over a little bit. Still has the keys in it with the little co-op key ring. Co-op feed for brighter net profits. Huh. Doesn't say where it's from, but I'm sure this is a Nebraska truck. I'm sure it spent its entire life in Nebraska or around there somewhere. I pulled the seat forward. It's not attached to these things on the back, so I pulled it forward and looked back there, but I don't see anything back there except for the gas tank. So probably nothing there. I looked under the seat as well. I don't really see anything under there. Check the ashtray. Every now and then you can find an old penny or something in there. Oh, just cigarettes in this one. Yep, yeah, just cigarettes. There we go. Let's see if we can get the glove box open. There we go. What's this? Okay, I see. This is a uh, inspection sheet where they got the truck and they tagged it from Pioneer Village from, I think it's dated 1992. Yeah, I saw it right here, 1992. So this truck was last inspected and tagged in 1992 by Harold Warp Pioneer Village Foundation. I have the title for this truck as well, and it looks like it was donated in 1990. So evidently they didn't do anything with it for a couple of years, and then they went ahead and tagged it in their name. Looks like a bunch of just random gaskets in here and stuff like that. Here's a little bottle. What's this? One tablet, morning and evening. 1960. Huh. Steve Anderson. I wonder what it is. It's kind of a neat little medicine bottle. I don't know if these have any value or not. LT Pedley. Druggist. West side of the square, Menden, Nebraska. Huh. So I bet you this truck, I mean, if this is a 1960 pill bottle and the truck's a 1950, then uh, this pr truck probably never did leave Menden, Nebraska. It probably lived its entire life right there in Menden. That's kind of interesting. Let's see what else we got in here. Hope oh, there's something in this. Oh, guys, check it out, check it out, check it out. What do we got in here? Got some silver coins, it looks like. Oh, no, they're not silver. That's just a nickel. What do we have here? What year is this nickel? 1941? Well, that's a war year nickel, but it's not that exciting. Nickels aren't that rare. And what is this? It's a wheat penny, but I can't see the year on it. Don't have my glasses on today. Okay, I figured out it's a 1941 penny, so uh, evidently they collected 1941 stuff or something. And then this here is a Mexican coin of some sort. I don't know what it is or what year it is. I don't think it's silver. Okay, I held it up close to my face, and I was able to figure out that this is a 1960. I don't know how many centavos this is. I didn't read that part. It doesn't really say. I don't really know what the value of this is. I mean, original value. I don't know what the current value is either, but if you know anything about these, let me know in the comments because I have, oh, it says something on the side here. Oh, something about independence and liberty. So yeah, I have no clue what this is worth. I don't know if this has any silver. It, it kind of looks like it has silver. It's not all corroded like the penny is. So I don't know, but yet it doesn't look silver either. It, Silver dollars and stuff like that don't usually look like this when you find those. So I don't know. If you know anything about these, let me know in the comments, please. Let's see if we got anything else in here. That's all that's in this. I don't know what that even was. Like a little bag. The mice have eaten most of it. So that maybe there was some more in there that fell out. Let's check it out. Door handle, a bolt. Let's see what else is in here. I'm going to have to wash my hands now. There's the insurance card from 1992. So yeah, they went ahead and tagged it. That's kind of interesting, though. That this truck was tagged in 1992. They took all the effort. Well, here's one from 1996 or 95 to 96. So that means they took all the effort 
to insure and tag this thing. They put this stuff in the glove box. Here's some parts that look like they're for this truck that aren't that old. I mean, maybe they are, I don't know, but that doesn't look like it's a vintage bag. And so they put all that in there, but they left a 1960 pill bottle and a brown paper bag wherever I threw it. I was down here on the floor with some old coins in it. So I don't know why they left those in there and put all this other stuff in there. So maybe they just didn't check. Maybe they put them in there and forgot they were in there. I don't really know. Okay, so I just went ahead and looked this up and what this is. This is 100 centavos, which is one peso. They made this style from 57 to 67, and it's actually 10% silver. That's why it kind of looks like silver, but not really. So there's not a lot of silver in it, but it does have 10%. It said scrap value right now at current prices is about a dollar. So not a lot there. Collector value, it's pretty rough. But, you know, you might be able to get 5 bucks out of it, maybe 10 at the most. I don't really know. I didn't really see. There's some nice ones for sale for pretty good money, but in this condition here, it's probably a 5 to $10 coin for a collector. So not a real big deal, but it's still just kind of an interesting find find this in the glove box of an old truck. I don't usually find stuff in the old trucks. It's usually newer stuff that I find stuff in. But anyway, back to this truck. We have not popped the hood on it yet, so we'll go ahead and do that now. The hood does have a little bit of damage, but once again, that's all workable stuff. Old Babbitt beater. It's missing the spark plugs, distributor cap. Other than that, it looks pretty complete. I'm not sure if it turns or not. Still got the radiator in it. That's a bonus. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a Babbitt beater. There's a chance they did put that valve cover on a few 235s, so I guess I need to look up the number and make sure. This is the 235. It has 909 as the casting number on the last three digits. And so this was a 1950 to 52 235. So that's definitely better than a 216. I guess I can hop up there with all the belts off of it. So I can't really see if it turns or not. I'll have to get a bar on it later. Hopefully it turns. I guess I'll give it one try and see. Now nah, with that belt being broken, I can't get down in there to see if it turns. It is full of fresh oil, not fresh oil, but good oil and it looks to be mostly covered up except for that one spot right there so that's the only thing that worries me is if a mouse or something got in there and made a nest on top of the head that may mess with it but i'm sure if nothing else the block is good the head is questionable but even then it, it still looks pretty clean there's no rat nest in here and the truck wasn't that dirty inside with mice so I, i'm betting that this engine here will turn once we get it out of there okay now it's time for numbers this truck here i gave 950 dollars for it I had to pay, I think, $50 in fees, so I have $1,000 in it there, and then I have about $140-some dollars in fuel, so $150 in fuel to go pick it up. So I have about $1,150 in this truck. That's more than I usually like to give on them, but I thought I was buying a rust-free truck, so that's why I was willing to pay a little bit extra. Normally, a truck in this condition here, I would max out around $900, $950, a little, maybe $1,000 because it does have a really good color on the nose, but that'd be about it. So I'm already cutting into my profit margin a little bit, especially knowing that it's not a rust-free cab. I do have a guy that buys a lot of these cabs from me in front clips, and he was interested in it, but with that spot on the floor, I don't know. I'm hoping, hoping I can talk him into buying it anyway. Uh, normally he would give me around $1,000 for one in this condition here. I'm gonna try to bump him up a little bit. I'd like to get at least 1200 for the cab and front clip. That way it covers everything and it puts $50 in the green. Then the radiator, when I sell that, obviously right now prices are down. I'm not gonna sell anything for scrap right now, but that radiator will bring about 100 bucks for scrap when I do sell it. So that puts us at about 150 in the green. Then I've got the rest of the chassis, not counting the engine. And that weighs right around two tons, give or take about two tons. And so if I wait till cars go back up to 200 a ton, they're a little under that right now. But if I wait, that'll be about $400. That'll put us about 550 in the green. And then the motor itself, if it turns, that, this is where the iffy part gets in. If the motor turns, it'll probably bring around five, $600 as a core, maybe more. If it doesn't turn, I'm looking at probably more like $200. So potentially I could make $1,000 on this truck, but there's a lot of variables in this because I don't know if the guy's gonna, gonna okay the $1,200 on it. And then also, I don't know about the engine, what condition that's really in. So let's just assume, worst case scenario, I wind up selling the cabin front clip for 1000 and that the engine doesn't turn and I sell it for 200 That comes out to a grand total of around $1,700. And like I say, that's assuming worst case scenario on everything. And so that puts me at about $550 in the green, which for an entire day, I guess is okay. <laughs> I drove clear to Nebraska and back for it, but it was a fun trip that I got to take with my dad and my son. And obviously, like I said, my son probably won't remember the trip, but he still had a ton of fun and we got some pictures and then my dad's been wanting to go see the museum for a while. So he got to go see that. So I guess there's that value as well. And I'll also have another day involved in processing this truck at least. Obviously, I'm not going to process it all at once. I'll probably pull the cabin clip one day, pull the motor another day, that sort of stuff kind of, and then I'll scrap it who knows when. But altogether, I'm going to have about two days invested in this truck. 
So two days invested in $550 isn't the greatest wages, but like I said, we did have a ton of fun, and then I'm making a video about it as well, so whatever that makes me, another 100 bucks or something. <laughs> like I say, I normally like to make a little bit more than that just to make it worth my time. I like to make, you know, around $700 on a truck profit. That may seem like a lot of money, but I've got a lot of overhead. I've got bills to pay. I, that's, it's, it's hard to operate on really slim profit margins. I can make it work at 550, anything less than that, and it's just really, really not worth my time. But anyway, that's what it is. There's supposed to be a guy here in a minute. I don't know where he's at. He should be here already, but he's got an old Studebaker. While I was picking that truck up up north, Skyler was down south picking up a Studebaker for me. Now, Skyler's at work, but he's going to have his buddy bring it in. But uh, I don't know where he's at, so I was hoping to show you guys that as well. So I guess I'll hang out for a minute and see if he shows up. And here it is. Boy, I wish they would have kept all that wire. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if they said they couldn't leave it behind, had to take it with the truck, or what it was. I'll have to talk to Skyler later and see. But I guess that's okay. I'll figure out what to do with it later. If I have to, I'll shove it in a dumpster, send it to the landfill. Maybe I can get it in cars. I don't know. We'll see. But here's the truck. It looks rough at first glance, but it's really not that rough. It does have some rust down here in the bottom, but all Studebakers do. The floors are pretty solid. The front clip's rusted out, but the hood is anyway. That's always very, very common on these Studebakers for the hood to rust out like that. But for what I'm going to do with it, that doesn't matter. It's got the really cool turn signals on it. So what I'll do on this one here is I'll cut it right here behind the turn signal. It's a little bit thicker than I usually cut them, and in fact when I cut it across, yeah, I'll probably cut it right behind the hood ornament, so it'll be a little bit thicker than usual, but with the look of this, this nose, you kind of need all that extra stuff on there. If it didn't have the turn signals, I'd cut right through the middle of the hood ornament and call it quits, but uh, we'll do that one a little bit longer. This side of the cab is pretty nice, the door's rusted out, but once again, that's pretty well typical on these. This truck here is very, very, very heavy. This is a solid steel bed and it has a heavy duty winch on it, plus the hydraulics to dump it. I guess they used it for an old rollback back in the day to load tractors and stuff like that. The bed goes all the way down to the ground on the back and that winch would pull stuff up on it. So there's a lot of extra iron on there. So it is very heavy and it was very butt heavy. He said it was about 50, 55 miles an hour tops. Any faster than that, it would start wagging. I don't know if there's a motor in it or not. I guess I'll try to get the hood open. Well, I can't get the hood open, but I can see the radiators in it, and then I look underneath, and the motor and transmission are still in it. So I'm not sure what they put in these these old trucks. Probably a V8. It could be a six-cylinder, but most of the ones we junked out over there at the uh, Studebaker cleanup we did last year were all V8 trucks. But we'll worry about that another day. What I'll have to do is cut the latch underneath there, and then I can get the hood open a little bit better, see what motor it is. But yeah, this is a pretty cool truck. I don't I don't know if this rollback setup's worth anything. It's so archaic and old. But the cab itself might be decent. I might be able to sell that cab, sell the nose off of it. This truck here popped up on Marketplace down in southern Kansas for $350 is all they wanted for it. Now, I had to pay quite a bit more than that for it for Skyler to go get it for me because it was a long drive. That truck there is one that I'll make more like what I usually like to make on old trucks. I got quite a few of these trucks out here sold. That one's sold. The cab on that one is sold. The cab on the one next to it and the front clip of it are sold. Uh, let's see what else we got out here. That truck is sold. The uh, cab on the tanker truck back there is sold. Uh, that one is not sold. Let's see what else we got here. You can kind of see those back there, those two cab over trucks. Those are both sold, or lower cab forward, whatever they're called. And then that cab and front clip is sold. So I've got a lot to cut off, and that's really not even all of them. <laughs> I've got more out here that need to be cut. There's one there. I'm really shocked I haven't been able to find a home for. Pretty well rust-free cab, five-window cab. The nose is kind of kind of wonky a little bit it's not that bad it's just kind of funky colors has a lot of moss on it a pressure washer would go a long ways on it but there's hardly any rust in this thing but there's just really no interest in it so I don't know that may be one there that I wind up having to art the whole thing out while I was waiting on him to get here with that truck I went and took a bunch of the old cars I had up front that were kind of in the way along the driveway and I took them all and I moved them back here in the trees most of them are just parts cars nobody will ever buy the whole car they're just too rusty too far stripped out things like that and some of them don't even have that good of art on them. There's not much left of them. So I just went ahead and stuck them all back there out of the way. So really, I got quite a bit done today. It's already 9, 30, 10 o'clock. My loader's in the shop getting service, so I can't go to the other yard yet. But uh, whenever it's done, 
I'll go do that. But until then, I guess I'm just going to hang out here and tinker around. If anything interesting happens, I'll go ahead and pop the camera back out. But other than that, I think we're going to go ahead and close this one out. We had a fun trip. We got some cool trucks. We got some cool coins. That was an unexpected bonus. Tell me in the comments what your favorite part of this video was, what your favorite uh, truck, car, whatever it was that you saw. Tell me what your favorite was. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. As always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. And remember to get out there and find an adventure. We'll see y'all next time.